Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wybot. Welcome back to Civilization Beyond Earth. Rising Tide. The sound is really low today. There we go. That's a bit more like it. So anyway, we're going to get a game started here. We're going to get a series started. We're going to play as Rodolgo. And I've always noticed that this game seems to be about basically like beating the opponents into submission at the highest difficulties until you actually are able to um, come up with the victory type that you want. And quite often you need to go in and you need to stop the other people. So I'm just saying to hell with it. We're going for a domination victory as Ridalgo, who specializes in war. We're going to go with uh, engineers as normal there. Uh, they provide plus two production per city, which is always good. Um, I'm not sure whether or not I want to do the, um, uh, like, I really want to do the Alien Hunter, uh, kind of build, where you go down Might and grab the, uh, Alien Hunting stuff for science, but at the same time I want to do other stuff as well. I might also want to do, I will do Industry, it's just a question of which one we do first. So, anyway... We'll grab tectonic scanners because I think that it's just objectively better than any of the others here. And then we actually go with laboratory because that provides us with pioneering tech, which allows us to build train unit, trade units faster, which is really important. So it allows us to build those trade depots right away. The way we normally do things is we start off with growth we get in there to get our free settler and then we uh, pop out and then we go to another tree like typically industry. Industry is usually very good for that sort of thing. Also, uh, the might tree is uh, in my in several of my more recent uh, Let's Plays proved to be pretty damn good as well. Anyway, we're going to get started on uh, price 569D here. It's a lush Terran world and... Uh, I think I want the Terran world. I want a little bit of a mixture in between uh, aquatic and uh, want a mixture between aquatic and uh, land combat. And we'll go ahead and we'll get started. And my apologies if my voice sounds distorted during this time. I won't be. of the blue rote that endured him endeared him to his men and women of Brasilia's army armed forces okay and, and the surrounding enemy fortifications with an individually placed oh with individually placed plasma charges he then carried gravely wounded soldiers to a safer location all while under heavy fire he defended the location until reinforcements could arrive nearly half an hour later oh my so basically he went in and he went rambo style like a boss in that one there's another one about uh peshawar where he like Staged an almost bloodless coup against a warlord, which was pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to have some beer while I uh, wait for the sucker to load. Alright, let's get started. Interesting. This is a good start. This is on a hill. Um, So we have the option of landing on the tundra and getting a coastal start but i think no the ai tends to spam units so we're settling on the hill we should get an extra hammer in our city yeah we've got two food two hammers and energy that'll get worked by our city that's good let's take a look at our research here folks Everything's going to take forever. 
I think chemistry is still the best one. It just gives us so much stuff, even if it doesn't give us affinity points, which we need to actually advance our military. All right, what do we got here? Old Earth Relic. Let's grab a second explorer for once here. Usually I just go straight Old Earth Relic. But I think I'll get a second explorer this time. We'll see if that... How that pans out. Alright, so let's cycle through the first few turns here. We're slowly... We're slowly accumulating diplomatic capital up in the corner there. Alright. So that's the coast. Possibly the west coast of the uh, continent. There's some aliens over there. Ah, there's a goodie pod over in the water. Okay, we'll pick that up. We're only making one culture per turn, though. That's not the greatest. Let's go in the water. We've got some science. Our sponsor had the foresight to send resource pods ahead of our expansion to be waiting when we arrived. Parts of... Parts to a large research instrument have been found in this pod. Other pieces are probably around here somewhere. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So somebody else has landed. Uh, how close are they to me? Should I be worried? No, they're quite a few tiles away. So I shouldn't be worried yet. In time, we may compete. Right now? No. Alright, it turns to growth. Uh, how are the tile assignments here? That's a good tile. This is also a good tile. Alright, they're picking the best tiles. Alright, you actually go conduct an expedition here. Maybe we can get an artifact out of it. Get a few little early boosts. Alright. And you go east. We found the alien nest. Alright. We'll leave that up for now. Um, let's get the old earth relic before anything else. Let's get the expedition up and running. And this guy's just going to poke around. I'm going to have a quick look at the Virtues tree here, folks. I want to decide our path here, whether we go down the Might tree like I kind of want to. But at the same time, industry is just so good. Because... It's got, like, all of the, uh, a lot of the bonuses in the, uh, in Civ 5. Just thrown into one tree. Here, so, like... Plus 10% production towards buildings, very good. Plus 5 energy in the capital, very good. What is essentially Rome's unique un unique ability in Civ 5, plus 25% production towards buildings when they already exist in the capital. Investment, which allows us to stockpile energy, not the greatest. But that does help up. So this has a cap, though. That's interesting. Profiteering. Plus health for every two trade units under... One health for every two trade units under your command. Okay. Alternative markets. It gives energy, plus six energy per station trade, which is what you're going to want to do a lot of times. This is uh, internal trade routes, which can be good, especially for war a lot. Liquidity, cheaper purchasing of units, that's just very good. Superior engineering, keep your orbital units in uh, space longer, that can be very good. Although not necessarily uh, needed. What's this one right here? Civic duty, every s tile generates half production for every population interesting 
So if you can get the city up really high, because I don't think that's workers. I think that's just the number of people. Anyway, then finally this one right here. Mangazi. Every city generates 0 0.2 health for every building. That can add up. So definitely some good stuff in the industry tree. Oh, and social investment. This is huge right here. Increase to manufactories. Over in this tree, however, let's see. Extra experience. Production towards military units. 0.25% uh, uh, health for every military unit under your command. That's good. Adaptive sciences. You get plus 20% uh, affinity for researching technologies. That's good. This one just gives you a free affinity point, which is very useful. And then uh, plus 10% production towards a unit for each upgrade it has. That's interesting. Democratized quartering. Half the cost of maintenance. I think that's basically the Zulu's bonus or something in Civ 5. And then Channeled Wrath. That's quite good. That's all units, so that's air and naval units here. So Anyway, we'll see. I'm still kind of on the fence. I'm feeling that Might is probably the correct choice for Brasilia. But still like the industry tree a lot. It depends. All right, so we're kind of boxed in here. We're going to have to fight a lot of aliens, so we might as well go for the tree, actually. Send this guy north, because we don't know what to do with him. Yeah, we got culture. Did we get anything else? No? Oh, interesting. The subset cures. Large percentage of our colonists are reporting a curious... Curious symptoms in their children. The first generation born since landing have having unpredictable, intense spikes of emotion, feeling phantom pain without experiencing it. Clearly something must be done. Interesting. Well, let's grab uh, this for starters. We're going to go down these three right here to get our free colonist. Apparently we're going to get this as well. So that expedition did, it did pay off, even though we didn't get a relic out of it. We're one away from our uh, free dude. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We might have it done by the time the trade depot's finished. That would be good. Ah, goody hut. Goody pod. And we'll have three population here. Plus three population, very good. We need to get a worker out soon. We need a lot of things. I usually like to buy my workers, but we'll see. Alright, so we can't really uh, check that one off yet. Oh, we got one of these. Interesting. So that'll give us production. You know what? Let's go ahead and throw that in the grinder to uh, get that trade depot up. And then we'll uh, have some production towards whatever we want to look at next. So we're pretty much in the north here. So we're actually in a fairly good strategic spot. More goodie pods. Excellent. All the pieces are accounted for. Our scientists will make good use of the instrument. Good. Ah, we also found a solar collector. Nice. Alright. 
So we got chemistry, physics. Physics opens up a couple here. Cognition is way too far away. Computing is way too far away. Maybe engineering. Engineering could be good. Let's go with physics. It'll get some ranged units. Ranged units are good. All right, so this is telling me 10 turns away, okay? You know what? Recycler looks good. Let's do that. All right, and our solar collector. Let's, let's launch it right here, I guess. That'll cover most of the tiles we want to work at the moment. So the solar collector gives plus one energy for every tile that it covers, and it covers uh, six tiles out from its uh, core there, and it also covers where it is around. So basically, uh, like this, seven hexes altogether. All right. So we have a trade depot quest. We want to get plus two energy from trade depots. Energy is good. Although production is also good. Oh, that is a lot of fraxite. We'll probably want to plop a city down right here. Would that be a good idea? I don't know. Anyway, we have a new arrival over here. Okay. More goodie pods. So this is... Not an alien nest, okay. Well, let's keep exploring the uh, Arctic here, just in case there's some uh, goodie pods. Making plus 11 energy per turn, doing pretty well there. Yep, there's a goodie pod, good. All right, so no uh, North Sea Alliance or uh, Chung Su yet. Odds are probably at least one of them will be in the game. We got flat out energy. Energy is good. Oh, another goodie pod. Excellent. These two explorers are uh, really paying off for me here. Just checking the difficulty here. <laughs> Want to make sure I am on the correct difficulty. So I feel like I'm getting more of these than I should. But I guess I'm just lucky. More culture. The impossible drive. Little understood earth technology which seemingly creates thrust from electricity alone. This experimental technology was chosen by a handful of nations to power their spacecraft. Cool. That'll give us some 30 science. I'll take it. It's not a lot, but eh, it's good enough. And that gets us our colonist. Well, the culture gets us our colonist. Now we just need to find a place to park the little bugger. This here is decent. I feel like we should be escorting the guy. Alright. Um, well, we know there's uh, some dudes up here. I think this area is safe. Might not be a bad area. Unfortunately, we're not going to get a canal city here because the Fraxite's there and settling on it would destroy it. I think they're right, though, about this area right here. Even though it's tundra... It's a nice spot. Yeah, and we've got some... These are plains down here. This is a plains hill. Then we can uh, do whatever we want in the ocean there. The ocean's not... The Arctic Ocean doesn't really limit us all that much. 
So coastal city and uh, tundra is not nearly as bad as it would be in a regular Civ game here. Alright, so we do want a convoy, but we probably also want a soldier here because this is getting a little ridiculous. Alright, so the recycler, we've got a quest for it. Can either get plus one food or plus 10% worker speed? We want to, uh, ew, that is not cool. Yeah, we're putting this guy right back in the city for now. Alright, how many turns for you to get back here? Alright, you. Go over there. Uh, you, Mr. Explorer. Head over here. You sleep for a turn. We don't know what we want to do with you yet. Well, we do, but it's just really freaking dangerous with all of this, uh, the presence of, uh, alien life forms here and the fact that their nest is so damn close. So we can pull you up here, which is safe for now. And we found another resource pod. Goody. Hmm. I do want to get some cities up. I think we can go here and be safe. It's getting a little... Getting a little dangerous. Yeah, so we're just taking a little bit of uh, attrition damage from Miasma. That's not too... That's not terrible. What are the uh, stats of this terrain here? This is Plains River. This is Plains River. Okay, so it's flat regardless. Let's get you on dry land. I don't really see any reason to settle here as opposed to here, so I think we'll settle right there. We're out of turns anyway. We're out of moves. Let's drop our outpost. Alright, so we got our first quest there. And let's uh, explore with our soldier unit. So five turns till physics, very good. Let's get a worker set up. Can we actually buy anything here? Oh, we can buy a trade convoy, let's do that. We don't really need to fortify inside of the city. There's not an imminent threat or immediate threat. Okay. Oh, we found the alien uh, skeleton. Very good. Ooh, more goody huts. Guess goody pod is the correct term in this case. Anyway, trade route. Ew, that goes really close to their thing. So we're going to hold off on that for a couple of turns. After this, once this is done and we're at four population, I'm going to get another settler, probably settle near the frac site. Oh boy, I smell, uh, I smell a rat. A rat named, uh, Han J. Moon. I really don't like that guy. He's mean. Hey, who have we met? Ah, it's you. 
She's normally, uh, KP's normally fairly not crazy. Namaste. How about this? Will you give me this? I could really use... Seriously? Speak from... Ah. Still have positive health, but that's going to change in a really big hurry. Ooh! Progenitor runes! I have a charge. Excellent. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so if we do this... Uh, I think we're actually safe to do that now, and he won't... Uh, of course he did. Just watch me lose this guy because I'm wrong. Although this guy will exert zone of control somewhat. Is it okay? Did it live? Yes. Alright, you're going to fortify up, and if they attack us, then so be it. You are going to conduct an expedition over the progenitor runes. You're going to get the goodie hut. Population estimate computer. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw that in the grinder. Consider a simple problem, such as navigation in a spaceship approaching light speed. Yeah, it's a very simple problem. So... Some people in the past have asked why I just throw things into the grinder uh, immediately. The grinder, as I like to call it, I just use the uh, relics as soon as I get them, as opposed to just holding off and getting the bonuses. Uh, the reason I do that is that I like the... Uh, I find that uh, just getting those immediate boosts is just a lot more helpful than whatever else I might uh, get there. Like, every now and then you can get something really good. And then you can get something really crappy as well. So, it's not 100% for starters. Like, sometimes you just get, like, some sort of stupid little promotion for you guys. I don't even remember what it was, but I was uh, taking all the Leon artifacts. And then I uh, just researched them all at once, and I got something useless. Um... But yeah, getting those early on in the game, which is when you're most likely to get them, and just throwing them into uh, the grinder for research points, it, I just find much more beneficial. Because we're making, say, five signs per turn right here. And then that uh, just gave us something like 30 science. So that's, that's six turns worth of science right there. So it just adds up. It adds up quite a bit. All right, so physics is done. It'll take a long ass time to do ballistics. It'll take a long ass time to do computers too. Uh, ballistics is probably a good idea though. It'll get us some affinity points. It'll get us the station sentinel. It'll give us the stellar cotex, but we don't care too much about wonders. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do like maybe one more turn or so and then I'll throw a cut down in the video. So far we've got our second city founded. We'll at least uh, begin production on our uh, our next colonist there. Oh! New alien nest and new goodie hut. Excellent. Oh, more goodie huts! All right. Wonder where the uh, next guy's gonna work there. If the what do we got? Have, don't seem as uh, those are decent tiles. They're saying that I got a lot of diplomatic capital now. Yeah, I can upgrade my personality trait or add one of these. I think we'll upgrade for starters. Uh, let's get that colonist. After that, we can start worrying about stuff like laboratories. Grab the goodie hut. Excellent. And I guess we can start going down the might tree and get those alien hunter bonuses. Once we have those, we can uh, start getting a little bit more aggressive. 
Um, yeah, there is no river there, so I'm not sure if that would stop them or not. Let's go ahead and build a plantation, see how that goes. Hopefully our worker doesn't die. And, all right, I think we'll go ahead, we'll start pulling that guy back for when we get our next settler. Grab this goodie hut. 15 culture, I'll take it. And is this thing going to ruin a perfectly good spot? I like New Babylon. Uh, it didn't ruin it as much as I thought it would. I mean, we can still get a pretty good aquatic city up here if we want to. But yeah, this was one of the more prime locations. But it'll give a decent amount of culture, so that's something to keep in mind. And we can, of course, settle three tiles away from it. So we can settle here, and then grab all this, so it's not the end of the world. Anyway, guys, I think this is probably a good place to uh, throw down a cut. So I'm um, going to do just that. I'm just checking out uh, things right here, so... If we wanted to settle something, it wouldn't be here. It would be either an aquatic city here or a city on the hill here. Hmm. Let's take a quick look here. Yeah, there'd be overlap. So maybe an aquatic city might be a good idea. Potentially. Anyway, we'll uh, figure that one out a little bit later. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this video. And... Uh, if you are, please subscribe to my channel to uh, see the uh, next episodes in the series. And I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully we can get a little bit of uh, extermination done with our uh, pest problem here.